Hello, my name is Matt Williams. Welcome to our review of my Subaru 2020 Ascent. Before launching into my customary disclaimers, I want to take a moment to list upcoming Subaru Ascent videos on this channel. They are my recommended settings when purchasing a new Subaru Ascent, installation and review of the brake controller I use, a review of my 2021 Subaru Ascent because this review will be extensive, it will be broken into video segments covering specific categories. A joint review with my daughter and I of her new 2021 Subaru Crosstrek. She has a more bubbly personality than I do, and she's also easier on the eyes, and I look forward to working with her. And finally, a video offering my parents' viewpoints and experience with their new 2021 Subaru Ascent in the Touring Trim Package providing insights from a generation that has had more experience with vehicles with significantly less technology than new Subarus. My review of my 2020 Subaru Ascent Touring will be in two parts, the goal being to break videos into more manageable viewing sizes. The first video, the one you are watching now, will cover what changed in 2020 Subaru Ascent from 2019 and my personal opinions of the changes. The second video, which is already filmed and will be released the following week, will cover what did not change that I feel should have, my wish list for changes, and what I really like about my Subaru 2020 Ascent after driving the 2020 Jeep Cherokee in the limited package for a week. Specific issues I had with my 2020 Ascent. For your convenience, links are provided in the video description that will allow you to click to the outline topics. Now for the disclaimers. I am not a professional driver and I do not review vehicles for a living. The following are my opinions based upon my experience and should not be construed as a recommendation. We did not receive monetary compensation for the making of this video. It is a review, not a commercial. And finally, in reference to a viewer comment, I am not responsible and therefore held harmless for my choice of hat used during making of this video. As with my review of my 2019 Subaru Ascent, the goal of this video is to address some of the more subtle characteristics of ownership that I could not find in my review videos myself when I considered purchasing a Subaru Ascent for the first time. There are many similarities between the 2019 and 2020 models. Because of the detail in my video of 2019, I will be focusing primarily upon the changes in the 2020 and what I hoped would change and did not. My hope is that watching my 2019 Ascent review and the two videos of my 2020 Ascent will provide a well-rounded view of my opinions of the vehicle. Several reviews have asked when this video will be released. I would like to apologize to my viewers who have been patiently waiting. I committed to driving my 2020 Subaru Ascent for a minimum of 10,000 miles before reviewing. I had no idea how long it would take me while in the COVID-19 pandemic. It took me nearly 12 months of driving until I finally reached my mileage threshold. Yahoo, right? Well, sort of. When I took the vehicle in for its 12,000 mile service, I traded it in for a new 2021. Though I no longer have possession of my 2020 Subaru Ascent, I feel I know it well enough to offer, offer a competent review. So. Let us get into the review and we might as well start with the vehicle value retention. I've been amazed at the tradability of Subarus. I know what you're thinking. If you come up with enough money to throw into the deal, you can trade anything, but that did not happen in my case. I was not intending to trade my 2019 or my 2020 Subaru Ascents. And when Dick Hanna Subaru in Vancouver, Washington offered to look at trading, I half-heartedly threw out what I needed for a deal to make sense to me. To avoid bogging down the video with those details, we have included them in the description under the video if you're interested. Before starting with what changed from my 2019 to my 2020 Ascent, I would just like to ask that if you like what we're doing on this channel, please remember to click the like and subscribe buttons. Click the notification button if you wish to be notified of new video releases. Your questions and comments are also greatly appreciated, even if it is just to give me grief about my hat. That said, the first change that comes to mind is the addition of the rear seat reminder alert, which Subaru added for no additional cost. The idea behind this feature is to provide a visual, 
an audible alert to the driver that a child and or pet could potentially be in one of their rear seats. Why do I say potentially? Because the system does not actively detect, but rather posts an alert if one of several conditions are met, which involve the opening and closing of rear passenger side doors. For me, I do not even pay attention to it. Maybe it's because my kids are grown or because the dog is safely crated in the rear luggage area. If you own a late model Subaru, you know that they have many alert tones and I do appreciate and pay attention to them. Well, all but this one. If you are a parent or a pet owner and have this feature in your Subaru, I would appreciate your leaving a comment as to whether you find this particular feature beneficial or not. The next is the one touch light switch. I thought this feature a good idea. I appreciate being able to turn on all the interior lights without having to open the door or roll the light dimmer switch to on, thereby changing my dash illumination level setting. The problem for me is the location of the switch. It's still buried down low on the dash with the other switches, including the dash light dimmer. So that ironically, I need a light source to find the switch to activate it if the vehicle is dark. This has happened when I'm fatigued and pull over to rest at night in a poorly lit area. Once the interior lights dim, there is nothing pointing my way to the switch. I did discover, discover that I can feel the dash and because the buttons are recessed into individual borders, I was able to determine by touch the top left most button and then count over one to the light button. A faint LED light in the face of the button that make, remains on after the vehicle has been switched off would be nice or maybe if pressing in the buttons on the steering wheel would result in illuminating that particular instrument cluster, either of those two solutions would solve the problem for me. Subaru is big on safety, and I believe light that is readily and easily available is a safety consideration. Power folding mirrors. I was very happy to have this feature added to my 2020 Subaru. As parking spaces become narrower, I like having the ability to quickly fold in both side view mirrors with the touch of a button before exiting my car, thereby sparing my vehicle the damage I've observed on other cars parked in lots. I also like this feature when entering or backing out of my narrow garage. The tailgate lock button feature. This is a feature I find surprisingly beneficial. If you have the active FOB system and Subaru Starlink on your Subaru, you may find, as I did, that my keys never leave my pocket. I can unlock, start, and even reset the seat position to my preferences without my keys leaving my pocket. As such, I found myself often leaving my front passenger drawer ajar while I accessed the rear of my vehicle, so that once I was finished and lowered the tailgate, I could then lock my car by pressing the lock button on the driver door panel and then closing the, the driver door. Having the lock button on the tailgate greatly simplifies my process. Now I can just push the lock button, which closes the tailgate and subsequently locks my vehicle, allowing me to be on my way. An audible tone indicating that the tailgate is closed, secure, and locked can be heard as I walk away. Just as a quick note here, I'm currently driving a 2020 Jeep Cherokee in the limited trim package. The tailgate does not have the close or close lock actuator button on the underside of the tailgate, which means that I must take out my fob out of my pocket or walk to the dash panel in the driver's side compartment to lower the tailgate because I cannot reach the actuator on the back of the tailgate once it's raised. This experience showed me how helpful those two little buttons on the Subaru are. I guess I should fess up at this point and explain that I am driving the Jeep as a rental while a minor fender bender is taken care of on my new 2021 Ascent. Yes, I backed into another vehicle with only 600 miles on my new car. So how did that happen while the, with all the safety alerts? Well, I will cover that in my review of my 2021. I will say that the Subaru safety mechanisms did not fail. There was a programming change not noted to the infotainment center that I'm not particularly fond of. In my 2019, if I plugged in my phone to the charging outlets in the forward dash, I was offered an option to use or decline Android Auto. In my 2020 Ascent, Android Auto is automatically enabled, effectively hijacking my infotainment center. 
I prefer to still have the option to decide for myself if I wish to use Android Auto. To bypass this, I run a charging cord from the back seat to the forward seating area for charging. The final change, which I noted, is also not a publicized change, but I think, I think it's worth mentioning. In my 2019 model year, the simulated shift point for 8th geared would clunk or shift hard from time to time, mostly if you used eased up to the point and then let off the accelerator. They seem to have all but eliminated the quirk in my 2020 model year. That wraps up our review video of the 20... Take 14. <laughs> that wraps up our review video of the Subaru 2020 Ascent model year changes. Don't forget to watch for the second part of my 2020 Subaru Ascent review, which will be released next week. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Comments are always welcomed and appreciated. Thank you for watching.